um, welcome to uh, today's CAA webinar. So at first, a um, short uh, introduction. Um, I um, have been working in can automation um, since uh, 2016, and um, I am uh, the CIA secretary for some CIA technical working groups, and um, as um, SIG can SL. So today um, I uh, will give you a short, uh, briefly uh, report uh, about uh, uh, some uh, some knowledge um, of this topic. So. Yes, and today uh, we will talk about KXL, and this is the third Ken data link layer protocol generation. And um, at the beginning, some uh, general information. CAA is the international users and manufacturers group that uh, develops and supports Ken open and other Ken based higher layer protocols. And uh, we provide uh, Informations about uh, can based and techno uh, te uh, technologies and products and marketing information. And here you see the structure of the CA technical groups. And um, so you can see uh, in the, the IG lower layers, this is the uh, special uh, interest group can XL. So in this group, we are uh, discussing then the uh, development of KXL. So in this uh, interested group, uh, lower layers, we uh, discuss uh, the uh, physical layer and data link layer for Ken. And uh, one another interesting group uh, is the uh, SIG Ken FD Lite. Uh, this group uh, was uh, already started since months and uh, we, uh, um, we are intended to, specif uh, to uh, specify a subset of um, CANFG uh, protocol um, with uh, the communication uh, model of a slave and master. So it could be a subset, uh, it will be a subset of the CANFG uh, protocol specified in the ISO 11898-1. If you have interests, you could contact CIA office. And uh, CIA has planned uh, this year uh, to hold the uh, international CAN conference, but uh, due to the yeah, uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, so we have postponed the conference uh, to next year, uh, June. And but uh, the pro, uh, the uh, uh, the proceedings are already available. Uh, for further information, you can contact the state secretary. So then we go to uh, the uh, can history. So, um, in the 1991, um, there are uh, the first, um, there are the first um, car with the uh, K network. And uh, then um, in the years um, between um, 19, uh, 1905 and uh, 2021, um, so Ken was uh, dominating as um, in vehicle network uh, in cars, and um, nearly all cars. So um, the uh, um, the trend. Uh, in that time, uh, is uh, almost a, a domain-oriented network. So uh, this is a um, very good idea because uh, you could uh, simplify the network architecture and software. And for, um, un, 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 unfortunately, the networks or the different components for different domains are located in the uh, vehicle. For example, in the front, left, right, or in the roof. This means that uh, with the ever increasing number of ECUs and uh, 
a lot of uh, cabling has to be used. The cable in vehicle can be five kilometer long, for example. So for the future, um, we should reduce the uh, car weight and get more space uh, in the cars. So, um, so for this reason, and uh, this new idea is coming. And that means um, tone and architecture. At the moment, uh, it is still a development and the theory. This idea is but very simple. And you have four tonal controllers. They are very powerful and are connected uh, to a high speed network like Ethernet. So uh, sensors, um, actuators, and uh, they are um, not directly uh, connected uh, to the. Uh, they are um, uh, they are uh, connected to the subtone network. So like uh, also like uh, Ling uh, or uh, FlexRay. So this, um, so this new idea um, is uh, more or less a physical, uh, a physical architecture. So uh, this, uh, so that the uh, varying is reduced, and uh, the cable from uh, roof uh, to bottom uh, can be shared. But uh, therefore, um, we need um, more um, bandwise uh, to transmit or relevant data. So uh, what does this uh, subzone network mean and uh, what are the requirements? So we need uh, the network sca uh, scalability regarding bit rate, data lens, and we need um, integration of uh, latency uh, in vehicle approaches. We need uh, open communication standards and uh, et cetera. So as it seems, um, can XL could be a good concept for this new uh, architecture. So classical CAN is still the most commonly used protocol of the uh, CAN data leak layer. This will, con uh, this will continue in the next years. This year, uh, KFD continues its way um, into uh, passenger cars and uh, will migrate further into uh, vehicle network uh, architectures. Step by step, um, classical CAN um, network uh, will be replaced by uh, KFD networks. KFG um, is an improvement of the uh, why established CAN protocol and to increase the bit rate up, uh, up to five megabits and the payload is um, up to uh, 64 bytes. In the truck uh, industry and other uh, non automotive applications are uh, also um, migrating to KFG. So for zone oriented uh, in vehicle networks, um, common standard, uh, com, uh, standardized protocols for higher layer are needed. They uh, should be as uh, independent as uh, possible from uh, the lower layer protocols. This uh, would allow the use um, of special technical and uh, commercial features of the different communication technologies. Of course, uh, the classical CAN and KFD protocols uh, supporting TCP IP um, are not the best approach on lower layer. Therefore, um, CIA and uh, our members have uh, started uh, to discuss the features for the next generation um, of a CAN based protocol since uh, the end of uh, 2018, and this is called CAN XL. Uh, at the moment, uh, the special interest group can SL uh, is, uh, is um, specifying the uh, protocol. And in the meantime, we have uh, additionally uh, three task forces, the uh, physical layer, the higher layer, and the uh, data link layer security. 
and we have uh, um, 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 we um, we uh, plan uh, we uh, plan to uh, um, have um, two uh, document series. This is the CIA six ten document series and the CIA uh, six eleven document series. And um, so um, after two years intense uh, discussion, the KX edit link layer protocol specification uh, is the uh, six, uh, uh, 610 one and is recently uh, technically stable and uh, will be released um, expect, expected in the beginning of 2021 uh, SSA document. So as the next step, uh, the ISO standardization will also be started. So the KSL um, specification is um, not yet uh, finalized, um, but uh, the uh, part one protocol is almost yeah, um, technical stable. So the data link layer has the following key features. And, um, they are the uh, large data field with up to 2048 byte and uh, KSL support higher bit rates up to 10 megabits or above. KSL has a uh, higher layer management uh, information and uh, KSL has um, improved uh, reliability by means of uh, two CRC fields. So this uh, gives the system designer uh, the flexibility to adapt the network to the requirements of the applications. And um, so to have a little uh, better of uh, understanding for your background information, um, CAN is uh, specified similar to Ethernet. Regarding the data link layer, we have two sub layers. Um, however, uh, this is only a theory. We will not see the interface uh, between the LLC and Mac because um, this is um, inside uh, in the CAN controller. What you see uh, from the top of the view from the LLC is the uh, API to the uh, application in the host controllers. And uh, even uh, Mac is not visible in um, um, because um, um, because the physical layer uh, is um, and because uh, the Mac uh, will be uh, uh, in, uh, partly uh, implemented in the CAN controller in the CAN protocol controller. And uh, what uh, you will see uh, as the user of the CAN controller, and uh, you will see the uh, LC frame format, which is a um, new. Uh, it is a new uh, uh, new uh, format for KXL, um, because um, we are backwards compatible to uh, KFD as well as uh, for classical CAN, and. Um, so you could see, um, for example, the uh, priority ID, uh, we use the uh, 11 bit. And um, our fields uh, marked with green in the LLC format, you, uh, uh, um, you have to provide uh, this information uh, as the user. Um, for example, you have to provide the information um, if uh, this frame is a remote frame, or you have to, uh, to provide information um, if this is a FD frame or XL frame, and all other informations. Um, so like the bits, um, then we uh, will, uh, so I will explain it in the next slides uh, for detail. So in uh, classical CAN and uh, KFG, um, the KID field uh, is uh, used both uh, um, um, for both uh, arbitration and addressing purpose. 
in KSL, these functions are uh, separated. The KSL protocol uh, separates the priority functions, the 11-bit ID, and uh, the addressing the 32-bit uh, uh, acceptance field. So the 11-bit uh, priority ID uh, provides the uh, uniquely assigned uh, priority of the KSL data frame. And uh, the 32-bit uh, acceptance field can uh, contain the uh, node address and uh, the content um, of this message as a um, message ID. So uh, one another uh, information. Um, so KSL provide also some new uh, functionalities. And one of the new functionality is uh, a service data unit, uh, um, unit type information. This information is similar, uh, is, uh, similar to the ether type field uh, in the ethernet frame. If you are familiar uh, with ethernet, this is a kind of uh, layer management information. It uh, provides here the information um, which next OC layer protocol we are using. It could be a uh, latency can base higher layer protocols or uh, the tunneling of Ethernet frame or TCP IP segments or something others. So uh, the, um, the service data unit type um, is a feature that is, um, it is usable for uh, higher layer protocols. So uh, in the uh, first version of the say a six eleven one document, so we are planned uh, firstly and uh, to specify the uh, service data unit type for content based addressing and uh, node addressing, node tunneling of Ethernet frame, and for classical can and KFD data frames. So the further uh, types will be specified, uh, perhaps in the uh, in the other uh, in the further uh, documents. Uh, one another layer management information for the next layer. Um, yeah, this means for the higher layer. Um, it is the uh, virtual can network ID. So uh, with this ID. Uh, we alone in XL are uh, running virtually several networks on the same cable. Um, we distinguish um, up to uh, 200, uh, uh, 256 logical networks. Of course, uh, they can use the same SDU types. This will allow them to use um, many protocols in parallel on the same physical can network. So the SDU type and the virtual uh, the uh, virtual K network ID provides some uh, um, um, provide the same uh, flexibility and the same system option uh, options as in Ethernet. And for those applications, we will uh, also need security. And the uh, um, the so-called uh, card stack protocol can be optionally embedded in the CAN data link layer so that uh, we can protect uh, on the level of the data link layer our data. And we have um, integrated the SEC bit uh, in the uh, data frame so that um, we can know if this uh, um, if this can XL data frame uses this uh, card sec protocol. And, but uh, this feature is still in the uh, development, but uh, it is uh, expected to have this optional uh, data link layer security. At the end, uh, the user can choose uh, if they would like to use this or not. So uh, we have now the LC frame then uh, it uh, forwards to the MAC layer. 
um, the Mac layer adds some additional bits to protect the data. And on this slide, um, you see the fields marked in green are, automat uh, are um, automatically added by the Mac, uh, Mac layer. And uh, the green fields are uh, provided by the LC frame. So you see the uh, priority ID is still there, but uh, we have um, additional, uh, some other bits. And the uh, Mac sub layer uh, compromises uh, the functions and rules uh, related to uh, encapsulation and uh, decapsulation of the transmitted or received data. Error detection as well as uh, signaling and uh, management of, uh, of the uh, medium assess. And uh, for KXL, um, there is just uh, one single KXL Mac uh, frame format called uh, KXL frame format, uh, in short, XLFF. The frame um, has a, a variable length and can hold uh, one to uh, 2048 byte in the data field, while the data length can change in one byte steps. On, uh, um, uh, on transmission, an LC frame is uh, converted into a MAC frame. On reception, a MAC frame is um, converted uh, into an LC frame. So one MAC frame uh, in SO in the uh, XLFF are um, composed of the seven uh, different bits phrase as shown in this figure. So in the further slides, I will explain briefly the, uh, um, the fields. So one of the uh, difference uh, between uh, classical can KFD and KSL is that we have now two CRC fields instead of one. And the 30 uh, bit uh, preamble CRC, uh, namely PCRC, and the uh, 32 bit frame CRC, namely FCRC. Uh, these both CRC together um, protect the whole frame. So they are able to uh, detect any five uh, randomly distributed bit arrows in the oral conditions. And this uh, corresponds to a hemming distance of six. And um, the University of the Stuttgart uh, proposed the CRC uh, polynomials for PCRC and FCRC. Uh, and uh, uh, this is published uh, in the uh, ICC uh, International Can Conference this year. Uh, so you would like uh, if uh, if you would like to read this, you could contact us. At the moment, um, the University of Castle um, is uh, evaluating the error detection capabilities of the uh, XL Mac layer. So it would also means that uh, the CRC uh, polynomials are double checked. And the research uh, report by the Kassel University is uh, expected by uh, end of uh, 2020. So uh, what is the KNXL physical layer? So the KNXL um, data frame um, is uh, transmitted with uh, two bit rates. Uh, this is similar to KFD data frame. So the arbitration phase um, is um, similar um, to the as known um, the classical can arbitration phase. And uh, in the data phase, um, the maximum uh, bit rate is not limited by the network length. It uh, can be uh, 10 megabits and, uh, and or more. But then uh, it is depending um, on the transceiver uh, capabilities and uh, the selected uh, physical layer components. And uh, in the arbitration phase, this is um, also similar to uh, KFD and um, the selected bit rate uh, has impact on the network, uh, on the network lens. 
um, that means the higher the bit rate, uh, uh, the higher the bit rate, the shorter the possible network length. And um, so for uh, can uh, for uh, can XL, um, it is also uh, can seek XL transceiver uh, in uh, and is um, developed. Um, for uh, higher bit rates, uh, 10 megabits and above, the new CAN6, uh, the new uh, CAN6 XL transceivers, and uh, this uh, will be uh, specified in the document CR610-3. And uh, this should be used, um, should be used uh, if the bit rate uh, is higher, uh, is um, 10 megabits or is uh, higher. So, and the CANSIC XL uh, transceivers um, have uh, three modes to achieve the fast bits in the uh, data phase, but also alone arbitration in the same frame. So, the three uh, modes are named uh, SIG mode, fast TX mode, and fast RX mode. In the SIG mode, uh, the uh, transceiver drives dominant and recessive bits as known from classical CAN. And uh, in the fast TX mode, the transceiver drives uh, level one and level uh, zero signals uh, with uh, differential voltage levels of uh, minus one volt and plus one volt. In uh, fast RX mode, the transceiver doesn't drive the bus. Additionally, can seek uh, XL transceivers uh, support the uh, medium independent CAN interface. Uh, in short, Mickey, this is required uh, to uh, signal uh, uh, to uh, signals the mode switching. So uh, the Mickey interface um, is based on a, a TX based uh, signal pass uh, pulse wise modulation symbols. And uh, this uh, preserved the two pin interface on RXD and TXD, and also for uh, can 6 l transceivers. The specification for Miki uh, is uh, still in the development, and uh, the can uh, um, the can six uh, the can six uh, XL transceivers support uh, the medium independent and. Um, uh, and the uh, Mickey interface um, is the um, invisible interface between uh, CANSIC SL transceivers and uh, CANSIC protocol controllers. During the data phase, um, the uh, TXD signal is uh, encoded by the CANSIC controller and is detected and uh, decoded in the transceiver. On the CANSIC controller side, uh, the existing oversampling of the time counter is uh, used to generate the duty cycle of 25% or 75%. Uh, Logical zero is encoded with a duty cycle of less than 50% and logical one is encoded with a duty cycle of more than 50%. So uh, as shown in the figure, and um, so uh, we have already and, uh, planned, uh, the group has already discussed and planned to integrate the Mickey specification and uh, into the uh, protocol specification part, part one and to the transceiver, uh, the PMA, spec uh, the PMA spec uh, specific specification part, the part three. So uh, now we are back to this uh, Mac frame uh, in XL format. And because um, we, uh, as I have already introduced the uh, can seek XL transceiver, they have three modes. And the physical layer has in, uh, um, can uh, reflect on the uh, Mac frame. So you see uh, this uh, ADS field that uh, in this field, the arbitration to data phase switch um, will be uh, 
will happen. So the first bit in the ADS uh, field uh, is the ADH bit, and it is sent as a logical one. During this bit, the CAN-SIG XL transceiver is switched from SIG mode in fast TX or fast RX mode. So the Mickey interface sends uh, PWM symbols uh, of, uh, um, of an arbitrary value to perform um, the proper transceiver mode switch. The OR can XL uh, node, um, uh, nodes uh, ignore the uh, sampled value of the ADH bit. And here uh, in the uh, ACK field, there is a field uh, DAS. That means a data phase to arbitration switch. And uh, the first bit in the DAS field is the DAH bit. This bit is uh, sent as a logical one. And, uh, the, uh, and, um, and uh, the, uh, this is the bit where, uh, where, uh, where, uh, where the transceiver mode in the KXL SIG transceiver is switched back to SIG mode. So uh, today, as I already uh, introduced the new transceiver type, uh, there are different transceiver technologies uh, that are used in CAN networks. So to uh, avoid uh, misunderstandings, um, the CAN community uh, should use uh, harmonized name, names for CAN uh, transceivers. Therefore, um, the SIG CAN SL working group uh, has met uh, to discuss and harmonize the naming of the different transceiver technologies. And uh, at the meetings, uh, it was agreed uh, to use the term uh, can seek transceiver. Uh, seek uh, stand for uh, uh, signal improvement capability. And uh, this uh, and uh, this transceiver uh, complies with the CIA 601-4 specification. And um, the newly developed transceivers for KSL, and uh, this um, will be called uh, can sig sl transceiver and is specified in the uh, CA 610-3 uh, document. But uh, for the transceiver technologies um, already specified in ISO 11898-2, and which have been available for several years. And uh, harmonized uh, designation is not easy to achieve since uh, many data sheets has um, already been uh, published. Nevertheless, uh, the CIA uh, recommends uh, to continue using the term uh, HS uh, can transceiver for um, um, for the uh, for the old products uh, that are limited to uh, bit rates of uh, one megabits, and for products uh, that uh, support improved optional parameters of the ISO eleven eight nine eight dash two, so should be called CANFD transceivers, um, but uh, without uh, specifying the bit rate. So it is um, assumed that uh, in future only can FD transceivers with the uh, strictest parameter uh, will be uh, be, uh, will, uh, um, will be offered. And there are also other transceiver technologies that are used in the CAN networks. So this is the so-called uh, CAN low speed transceiver and which uh, compliance with the ISO 11898-3 standard. So all CAN transceivers are backward compatible as shown in this table. And um, KXL is um, highly scalable regarding bit rates and the uh, uh, minimum assess un unit uh, physical sublayer. So they are normally implemented in transceiver chips or system-based chips. KSL controllers can be used um, with um, high-speed CAN transceiver and can seek transceiver. And um, with uh, using the uh, AUI interface as specified 
in the ISO 11898 document uh, um, standards. Additionally, can XL controllers can also be used uh, with uh, CANSIC SL transceivers to support a bit rate of 10 megabits and above. And to uh, signal the mode switch from the CAN controller to the transceiver, so can XL, uh, can, um, can XL controllers and transceivers should uh, implement the uh, Mickey interface. And um, the uh, standardization of uh, higher layer protocols um, is um, essential uh, to enable in, uh, interoperability of devices uh, with KSL um, connectivity. The KSL uh, task force uh, higher layer works, for example, on the following topics. And um, uh, we are now uh, doing the specification of um, SDU types uh, and uh, multi, uh, uh, multi PDU concept. This is um, similar to the concept known from Autosa. So this uh, alone to uh, aggregate several different PDUs and to send this as a multi PDU inside a single KSL MAC frame. So CIA, um, we are um, highly uh, commented to test uh, interoperability of transceivers and uh, protocol controllers in network environment. So um, now um, some um, um, semiconductor uh, manufacturer are uh, doing and making and a prototype or other uh, engineering sampling. So CIA was um, organized um, the so-called Blackfest uh, when a prototype in, uh, implementations of can seek SL transceiver um, are available. So conformance testing uh, is also very important. So this um, and uh, increase the um, pro, uh, uh, probability of uh, interoperability. So therefore, uh, we are now also uh, specifying uh, for all KSL related specifications, the conformance test plan. So uh, in sum, the KSL uh, runs uh, in data phase bit rates of up to 10 megabits. It provides a data field of uh, 1 to 2048 byte, and it features some uh, embedded layer management information for higher layer protocols. Important uh, is there's some um, backwards compatibility with KFD, and uh, it is um, highly scalable regarding the applications, but also regarding the supported bitrate. SKSL can be used with uh, many different transceivers. So please know that um, KFD and KSL um, address different use cases um, completing each other. KSL will be uh, mainly used as a backbone network in complex network architect uh, uh, architectures, while CANFD uh, is a highly performing uh, substitute of classical CAN and able to support uh, cy uh, cybersecurity and uh, functional safety. So uh, CIA had the um, original plan uh, to uh, introduce KSL on the International CAN Conference this year. And uh, this out to take place in Bern, Bern Germany uh, on March this year. And um, now um, this is postponed to next year. So um, the uh, technical uh, working group KSL and uh, its uh, task forces are working intensively uh, this year. And uh, we uh, expect uh, the release of the first document of the CIA 610 series at the beginning of uh, uh, 2021. So, um, so uh, now um, this document, the protocol of the KSL uh, is um, almost uh, technical uh, stable. So after that, uh, the international standardization at ISO will also be started. 
So uh, after that, uh, we uh, will um, organize the plug phase and uh, test the interoperability. So then um, the test plan uh, for the uh, XL protocol, the part two and uh, the part four, of, um, the conformance test plan for the part three physical layer, they are also started. We have already the um, work draft uh, documents. So if uh, you are interested in these topics, um, you can join our uh, working group. Uh, your opinions are very important. So that is all for today. And um, this is only a briefly uh, introduction and report. If you have more questions, you can write in chat or you can also um, write emails uh, to us. Thank you very much. Uh, I see one question, 32-bit uh, acceptance ID, what is the motivation for it? So this, um, 32-bit uh, uh, acceptance ID will provide uh, the, um, the content of the frame. So uh, this is a number and um, provide uh, which content could be in this frame. In the classical K and KFD, and, uh, this, um, this function uh, could also be uh, used, uh, not uh, specified. So, but now uh, in the case L, we will specify the uh, field uh, for this function and then it is um, harmonized. So can FD data frames and XL frames uh, coexist in the same network? There are still some um, discussion and if um, you use error signaling and um, this is the one, uh, the first important issue is if you use uh, error signaling. The second one is um, to, uh, to which bit rate you would like to use. So um, if you use um, bit rates up to five megabits, you could also use um, the CANSIC transceiver. Then you could have the CANFG uh, data frame and exit frame in one network. But um, you could not use the fast, the fast modes. If you would like to use the fast modes, you could only use the can seek XL transceiver. And uh, for this, um, if you use uh, the can seek uh, the can seek XL transceiver, you could uh, you don't have the error signaling. So during ETH frame. Tunneling does KSL nodes require MAC address and IP address in KSL network equivalent to the Ethernet network? Um, because um, I'm not uh, personally uh, participating in the higher layer uh, group, work, uh, working group, so I cannot answer this question very in detail. And um, I will um, note this question and uh, and which, uh, and uh, give you uh, give uh, give you an answer uh, by email. Is partial networking forcing this can seek SL? Yes, this is for sure. Um, yes, I think yes. Can KSL nodes transmit multiple uh, arbitration IDs, or would it be fixed? Um, I don't think so. So I, mm, I didn't hear uh, of a multiple arbitration ID. So I think can XL notes cannot do it, but uh, I can double check with uh, the experts in the group and give you a detailed question. So um, only for your uh, information, um, because um, the working group is still uh, working on the specifications that could be some differences uh, what I, uh, presented uh, today and to the end the final version to the specification. So if you have uh, questions or uh, interested to implement KSL, so please read the specification um, uh, if they are um, released. So, and uh, if you have um, very detailed technical questions to the protocol, to the, quest, uh, to the specifications, you could write emails to us, um, to headquarters or to our um, services. So 
then we have also times to uh, answer your question in detail. So, fine. I think uh, this is now all for today. Thank you very much for uh, attending and your, uh, and your attention.